In our video today, I want to be covering how we standardize dates and places and also how we enter names incorrectly. Because this is a worldwide website that we're sharing together, we have to have one standard format for entering in dates and places. And for us, we're going to be entering in the day of the month, the month written out in full, and the year. And then for places, we want to go from small to large. So you'd be going city, county, state, country. So to start this out, if you see any type of blue writing and you can hover over it and there a hand appears, you can actually click, click onto that and it opens up the ability to edit. So I'll click on edit. From here, the easiest way to make this happen is if I click behind 1840 and on my keyboard I hit the space bar, it forces a drop down menu. And I have to choose from the drop down menu for it to become standard. I'll do the same thing behind birthplace. Click behind United States, hit my space bar, and choose the one I feel is the most correct from their drop down menu. And then under the reasoning, I'll put why I'm changing this information. Sometimes people are literally watching an ancestor. Like if I go up here and I click watch, it will make that star black. And they will be watching and once a week they get emailed any changes that have been made to the ancestors they're watching. But you also just want to get in the habit of always writing a reasoning for why you're changing information on this website because we're all sharing it together and it just makes it clear as to why I'm doing what I'm doing. So let's go work on the death here. I click on the death information, go over to edit. From here, click behind 1890, hit my space bar, and then I choose from the drop down menu. I will do the same. This looks correct to me, but when I'm in here, I do this anyways and once again I'll just be putting that I'm standardizing this information and click on save. A couple reasons that it's really important to standardize the information we're entering is because it gives the computer power to go find record hints up here. Sometimes just by standardizing it automatically pulls me in record hints. You can see it didn't do that today but every once in a while that happens and it's wonderful when it does. A record hint is simply a source that the computer went out and found that it thinks pertains to my ancestor. So it's up to me to go make that determination whether it does or not, but boy do we love it when that happens. The other reason that we want to standardize is because it helps the computer go find possible duplicates inside the system. And once again, because we share this site worldwide, oftentimes we're entering in the same ancestors and it creates duplicates or those duplicates were created many years ago and it's up to us to go search the computer for them and merge them when we find them. Alright, let's dive in and understand how we enter in names properly into this website. One of the best ways to understand this, I'm going to go up here and click on this tab that I opened up here. I found this article simply by clicking on get help and up here I just typed in entering names. You can see I did that right here. And when I clicked on go, it allowed me to find this article. And it's, it, it's just a simple article that shows me different things like, you know, don't write the surname in capital letters. Make sure you're not using quotation marks, parentheses, underscores, slashes, or other invalid characters. Don't use the word or. So you can just take your time and read through this article. You can pull it up by yourself by clicking on getting help and just typing in entering names. But we need to understand the do's and don'ts for entering in names the proper way. I'll go back over here to Joseph's page. You can see here that Charles should not be here in parentheses, but we don't want to lose this name. So if I click on his name area and then go to edit, I'm simply just going to take out Charles right here. And my reasoning statement is um, that the name wasn't entered incorrectly. That's all I'm going to put right there and then down below I can just scroll down a little bit down to the other information and I can come in here and I'm going to say I want to add an alternate name. Right in here I can just type in Charles and I can put Dyer in here and then under here we can say documents provide this alternate name and then we'll save that information. So that way we didn't lose 
that great name that's been shown in different documents because I don't want to change the information that's out there. I simply just want to enter it all in correctly. So now that we have the name and the dates and places entered in correctly, now I just want to teach you a simple trick for what happens if I go to type in a place and I know it's correct, but the computer isn't recognizing it to be standard. How do I make that work? So I'm going to go up to a different ancestor. Under this ancestor, here's a burial, and I know that this burial is listed just a little bit different. You can see here that, yes, the place was entered incorrectly, but I know the name of the cemetery. And so I'm going to go in here and add the name of the cemetery. Cemetery. But you can see in the drop down menu, it doesn't record it the same way that I want it done. So in this case, Family Search has taught us if I go click out here in the white, it forces it to show that it's standard when it really isn't. And even though it doesn't match, it still shows that green standard bar. Now, what I've been taught that this does is it sends a message back to Family Search requesting them to make this cemetery and then the city, county, state, country standard. And eventually it will become standard. So it's just kind of a quick way to give them a message of, hey, I know this place, the cemetery in this place is correct. Please make it standard for us. So eventually it will be. I just click Save and then close that information out. Let me just give a couple other tricks to standardizing information. I want to go click on this other ancestor now. You can see over here, it lists under research help some data problems. And in here, it will tell you what they are. If you don't understand who they are too, if I click on it, it will tell me exactly which ancestor it's talking about. Just because it ends up here, it can be mentioning any of these family members on this entire page. So if you look at the information and you go, wow, this totally looks correct, just know it can be talking about children and siblings and anybody on this page. If I were to come in here though and I click on, let's just do this burial, it didn't even find that it was missing a, a burial problem over here. But if I click on this burial and then go to edit, oftentimes you can see that both of these are green bars. They look like they're standard, but you can tell they're not because this one says United States of America. A lot of people think if they just click on standard, it does bring up that drop down menu and when they click on it, notice how nothing changed. So be aware that you must right now just click behind your information, hit the space bar. It also brings up that drop down menu, but this time it actually changes it. In the future, this green standard bar will work with its drop down menu, but it doesn't right now. All right, we're going to jump from this area and go over to Abraham's page real quick because I want to just touch on this very last thing. You can see that when I come into his birth information, the top part looks green and it shows what's supposed to be standard. You would think that this information was standard because this is green. But here you can clearly see the birthplace is not standard, nor is this strip green, it's yellow. So I don't understand the reasoning in the computer while this, this green bar should be yellow showing it's not standard yet. So I don't know why sometimes it works and why sometimes it doesn't. That's why I just get in the habit of standardize, standardizing both the birth date and place when I'm in here working on stuff. So I would just click behind 1821, standardize that, click behind USA, standardize the place, and then change this to stay to say standardizing and then save it. I sure hope this helped in understanding the importance of standardizing dates and places and entering in names correctly.